Good morning, everyone. Hey, you know what's not on? Uh, what's not on? Oh, our, our, our on the air signs? Yeah. Yeah. We kept trying to turn those on, and, and we couldn't get them to turn on. Oh, they might be dead. Yeah. There you go. So, We're dead. Yeah, that's what you get for missing staff meetings. Well, <laughs> you know. I know. So, Trust me, I know. Do you have a good... I haven't been here in a while. Oh, I feel... Awkward, almost. Yeah, it, it is a little weird. Well, get off your phone, damn it. Well, um, we are. <laughs> There's something I wanted to talk about, and yeah. I'm trying to send the pictures right. through Messenger, which I forgot to put. put oh, in, kids! In there, so we'll, yeah. So we, they'll be up soon. We will. We will bunny trail. There, yes. There, this will happen. No. Nope. So, did you check this weekend? Um. Yes, I did. Yeah. Yeah. I, Fun and uh, excitement. Yeah, I droned. You droned. Yeah. On and on and on, but it's never ending with me. Yes. Well, I am grading. I am. At <laughs> <laughs> There's that too, and, and he's not talking about color grading either. No, either. I, uh, <laughs> I, I guess I just heard people abrasive. Being... Oh, that's it. Well, abrasive. Grading, abrasive. It's the same thing. Well, it depends. I mean, you know, you want to sand your cheese, or do you want to grate your cheese? <laughs> You I get completely different. Ah, make cheese great again. Great. There great. we have it. <laughs> oh my God, I want a T-shirt now. I just made that up. Uh, awesome. Make cheese great again. <laughs> cheese is grating. Oh, John, you're just cheesy. Anyway, that's all. See, so. that, that 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 was my way of saying you're cheesy. Yeah, I am. Very all right. Cheesy. Thank you very much. Yes. See, it's been a while since I've been here, so yep. it is what it is. Um, but yeah, it's uh, I yeah I droned and. Um, I gotta say, uh, um, everybody that knows me, if you know me, you know me, right? I, and I have, and I loved my, I have an H2 that I love to death. Um, and she just got old and tired and uh -oh. I really got really, I could not chase the issues anymore. No. And I was, you know, I'm the, of the mindset, oh, put a new motor in, I'm fine. I've already got a rebuilt training on it, right? Yep. Um, so, uh, but the wife said, do you really, do you really want to do this? It, it's the risk of walking out and turning the key and going, oh crap, I can't get to this important meeting. Right. So I got a new vehicle. Well, not a new, I don't, I never buy new. You're an idiot if you buy new. I'm just saying. Um, Debatable. Go ahead. No, I don't know. No, yeah. I'm sorry. So what'd you get? What'd you get? What'd you get? Um, I, I just got a truck. It's not a big deal. Oh, good. Um, but I have to say the experience that I had at this at this dealership yeah it was absolutely phenomenal cool i mean they took really good care of us uh we weren't there that long i kind of yep. knew i kind of knew already what i needed and mm -hmm. what i wanted yeah they had it on lot that's why we went to them and it's yep. not it wasn't a big dealership um and uh but we probably bought the lowest price vehicle on their lot. <laughs> and it being a truck, that is surprising. Yeah. Because it, new, new trucks these days yeah. well, are insanely it's couple, expensive. It's only a couple years old. I yeah. Mean, I, and it, and it, it, I got all the bells and whistles that I kind of... Yeah. Like, everybody's vehicle, except for mine, yeah. has a backup camera. Yeah, I don't have one either. Right. Um, what what so what year is it? What year is it? Uh, sixteen. Okay. So uh, and I for me that's not very old. I yeah. mean, I was driving an 03, mm -hmm. Right. And and I yep. loved it. Didn't want to yep. get rid of it. And I just got rid of my two thousand four. Gave it to my kids. So, um, but yeah, it might the my, the way I back things up, I go. Oh, I'm there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, you you and, have a backup sensor. Yes. Exactly. Yes. 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 I'm, I'm there, right? <laughs> so uh, it had, I mean it has it has it has all the bells and whistles inside, and um, but they had Maseratis, Aston sure. Martins, uh, Bentleys, 
They had they had the number one, uh, and I don't know. I guess it was a big deal. So this somebody thing. traded in a pickup truck to buy a Bentley. I think we're looking at a lottery winner. Right? Yeah. Um, the, the, Wait, just just what brand was it? Dodge. Oh, thank God. Yeah. Oh, I was worried you didn't get a real truck. My, my Thank son, you. Yeah, well, no, I mean, uh, my son's got a Ford F two fifty, and that thing's a monster. <laughs> and it, it will like tow it. It will pull a house on yeah. its foundation. But um, I just want to give a little bit of love. Discovery Auto in Tampa, really? right? Uh, I mean, they had this. They had number one of a two hundred run Aston Martin. Wow. And it's the only one in the U S. Wow. And I checked it because I got yeah, it. yeah 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 sure. And then I went and checked and I. Yeah. Like, oh my God! It is, and, and that's yeah. like a quarter of a million dollar car. Yeah. It's like, oh, that's but awesome. They have Maybox and yeah. they had they had Teslas. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, they, they had. Have, um, um, they had. No, they had. Um, I was driving behind a McLaren, going to, going across the you know, the, uh, the the Howard Frankenstein. Last week, and I'm like, oh, that is a sweet looking ride. Pretty, right? Yeah. They had the BMW. I hate seeing people half my age driving them. That just drives oh, me nuts. Uh, <laughs> they had a BMW hybrid power. Really? With a three yeah. cylinder. Nice. He goes, it's got a three cylinder, and I'm like, yeah. What? So did my Geo Metro. So, uh, <laughs> but anyway, that's when you give those discussions. So we know where all the motors for the Geo the Metros over went. In Tampa, they, yeah, mad they, props to them. Mad props. I mean, yep. because they got me in, they got me out, they gave me way more for my Hummer than I, than I deserved. Yeah, but watch what they do with it. Well, they'll probably bring it in, refurbish it, and no, sell it for $200,000. Uh, <laughs> I hope they take the uh, it wants to be Wee Beam TV. I no, we had a... Um, uh, last night we were playing Gloomhaven, which is um, a, a really cool tabletop board game that you can play. That uh, it's it, it it's nice because the version we have just doesn't dump you in; it builds you up level by level, right. so that you learn the mechanics one piece at a time. What is that game? Gloomhaven is a D and D board game kind of thing. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, played with deck mechanics. Oh, okay. And no dice. And it plays pretty well, um, but you know it's 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 an hour hour and a half game. Finished it, looked down at my phone, and saw I had over a thousand emails. Oof. I'm like W T H, and so I open it up, and it's all numerical submissions to a form on a website that we monitor. You know, we we built it, we monitor it. Right, right. And I'm like, what the hell is going on here? And so I went and started looking, and um, somebody had poked at it and found out that, you know, you didn't have to be a logged-in person to submit a trouble ticket, <laughs> which makes sense, okay, because your problem, I can't log in. Okay, so you have to log in in order to submit a trouble ticket. Well, they found out that you could do that. And so they started trying to put malicious code into the form. Oh, jeez. And then they built a bot to go after it and just keep going. And um, as it turns out, so I, I jumped online immediately, amped up the security on the site. I, I done what I should have done in the first place, which was put a honeypot on the form. Right. That, that is the easiest form of security out there. Uh, a honeypot, in case you don't know, is a field on your form that humans can't see. It is like a one pixel wide field. And a bot will see it, though. And a bot will fill something in on it. And if something fills something in, then your software automatically knows that this is not a human. <gasps> and so Ooh, it's... What a great idea. Yeah, the honeypot is awesome. And so I immediately put a honeypot on it, and I saw everything stop right. instantly. Because uh, it started to fill out the extra field on the form. And it took it another 3,058 tries before it finally gave up. <laughs> Uh, because then, then I pulled my, my report and I had over 14,000, uh, attempts at installing malicious software and everything. And it was nice because my security software like locked out, you know, 14 different, um, you know, I, I, IP addresses. It locked out, uh, 358 users that attempted to log in with, you know, fake usernames because right. we track that and it automatically locks anybody out. Uh, so it just did, it just did a whole bunch of beautiful things, um, to protect everything. Uh, but I went in and I just jacked it up because this was all coming from overseas and this is a domestic site. Excuse me. So I just turned off um, all other countries, and it, it was definitely coming from out of country. Uh, so right. 
that also helped just shut everything down instantly. So that's what I did on my Sunday night after having a nice relaxing game of Gloomhaven. The end. Uh, so, yeah. But other than that, we put in a wash rack for the horses. That was nice. Oh, that's okay. Uh, yeah, put in the flooring for it. So, yay, go team. That was low tech. Go team. Yeah. We're not the only ones who had a good weekend, though. Right. Who else? No. Had? Rumble had a good weekend. Yeah, let's talk about Rumble. Yeah. Rumble is a video platform that is really taking off and adding so many awesome services. Uh, you can embed their stuff into your website. You can do whatever you want. They are a free speech oriented site so that you won't find yourself being, you know, suddenly deplatformed because you, you know, use the wrong pronoun. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they uh, obviously, you can't break the law. You can't, you know, advocate for anything illegal or anything like that. But, right. um, but if it's not illegal, then it shouldn't be, you know, being censored. Yes. And so, they uh, merged with a company from New York. Now they're actually a Toronto company, and so they're not based in the U.S. Uh, not yet. I think they're going to be moving to Florida. That's that's my now, guess. Is, uh, There's a lot of talk Bongino? about them. Yeah. Bongino's yeah, part yeah, of this, yeah, right? yeah. Bongino's a shareholder, and uh, but Rumble merged with uh, CNVS or something like. I can't remember the. Um, scroll down a little bit more so I can see the. Uh, the there it is. Um, CFVI. Uh, that's uh, that's a holding company owned by Cantor Fitzgerald, and they're like, oh, we merged with the Cantor Fitzgerald company. Cantor Fitzgerald lost lost 600 people in, in you know 9/11 in the towers, yada yada. Mm, I do so this is that. yes, I'm, I, I worked for Morgan Stanley at the time. Right, right. We lost six. Right. We had insane protocols in place to get everybody out of the building. So regardless. you were not above the 21st. Yeah, they were. Day. Not in the. We were in the other building. You were in we were on the 65th through 68th floor so of the other building. building. Two? Yeah, and so when as soon as they hit building one, right. we started evacuating. Right, right. Our our last people were on the 40th floor when it hit the 60th floor, when the airplane hit. So we were already 20 stories down. Um, but the um, but in this case, uh, little secret. Okay, they haven't merged with anything. A lot of these companies, these big uh, brokerage firms, they have these symbols that are listed on Nasdaq, mm -hmm. and they're empty shells. Mm. So what they do is they sell the shell. Mm. They call it a merger, right? And it saves you two to three years of Nasdaq application, right? To get listed. Now what they're going to do is they're going to come in. It's going to be called CNVI, and mark my words, in probably about six months, you're going to see them put in an application to change the symbol to like RMBL. Oh, okay. Okay, and then that'll be their symbol on Nasdaq. So for now, it's CNVI. You can go in. You can actively trade in Rumble so stock right it? now. Yes, you can. That's it's about ten bucks a share. That's not bad. No. Well, it now depends on how many shares there are. If there's only two shares, you know, uh, then it's really good. If there's ten billion shares, then you know. Uh, so yeah, you can get in and get in ground floor on Rumble right okay, now. Okay. So I'm glad you brought yes. this up. I'm mm -hmm. hoping Rob may have been able to get those two images I put in the messenger. Okay. In the messenger. <laughs> um, because the meta messenger let me tell you this has been the most frustrating two weeks with facebook i've ever had oh yeah right so we got popped we've been getting hit for dumb shit i'm just saying it dumb shit oh yeah right but the first dumb shit is a oh, comment i, I made mm -hmm. that can that can be seen as uh this is on demand or something like that and there there's the comment right there right it's crazy. Um, yeah. Yeah, you can watch it on demand. You can watch it on demand. That it went, that, that it went against their community standards. Even though people can go to your website and watch it on demand. Yeah. Now, the second one, I put this up, and this kind of pissed a lot of people off. Um, so it was the beginning of our day. There you go. The American flag. Ah, uh, well, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, but you know what? So, here's and here's why I'm glad you brought Rumble up. I like Rumble. Yep. Um, I want to use it. Yep. But the problem is with us, we have to have the ability to have a um, a stream code that doesn't change. Right. And with them, it changes every day. Right. And you got to set it up. Yep. When once they fix that, we'll be back on Rumble. Yep. Right now, it's too much. Sometimes in the mornings for us yeah. to come in. I mean, or. There's days where um, we're not here, 
and all of our system is automated and it won't go to rumble because I can't yeah. go to rumble because it can't be automated. Yeah. I would still make sure that we're uploading our videos anyway as, as we're going through the upload routine yeah, after 18, the fact. But we have 18 hour days. I understand. Right. So. Yeah. But, but if you're uploading stuff anyway, just, just put it in the lineup to upload um, so that you're building your content out there so when it does go I, live, it's, it's massively Absolutely. populated. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah. So, good news on Rumble. Now, if you're aware, Rumble bought locals yes. uh, about a month ago. I, the merged bot, yeah. Um, so, this is kind of cool because both of these you know, groups. Uh, Locals is spearheaded by um, Dave Rubin, and Rumble is pretty much the public face of Rumble is Dan Bongino. Right. And so these two here have now taken their stuff and gone public so they can, they're basically crowdfunding the development of these platforms. Mm -hmm. And I, I love Locals. I think it's one of the slickest things I've seen in a long time. I wonder if we could get him, I wonder if we can get him on and let him talk about this. Uh, Dan, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll see what I can put together. Right, because I think um, I would like to hear him talk about it. And, you know, because, I mean, look, he's a media guy. We are yeah, media yeah he, he's, he was, he's the media face. He's not the tech guy. He was going to run. Yeah, that's okay. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll, 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 have, the, I'll have the media sure. face talk sure. all day long. Um, you know, and he, you know, he did run for, I think he ran for he, Congress or Senate. A couple times, like yes. He, he he's run for a public office a couple times. And even he said that he, now he says, I'm glad I didn't make it because it's just, he goes, I, would, I, would, it, I didn't want to get, uh, corrupted. Yeah. By the swamp rats. Yep. So, and he said that this morning. I'm not making that up. That's that's out of his. No, word, it's right? it's. Word, yeah. So. No, I'm he's not sure for the platform for him, but I'd love to get him on just let him talk about it. Yeah. So let's Good talk about stuff. this. Now, this is interesting. <sighs> this Apple is. Apple is fighting Russian regulators' demands on alternative app payments. Yep. Uh, <laughs> it's an interesting story because. You know, the way I read it is uh, Russia wants to force Apple to allow app developers to say, oh, I don't have to pay for this on Apple. I can go pay 20% less somewhere else. Let me go do that. Didn't, didn't we already have this fight in the U.S. and they, everybody lost? Uh, yeah. And beyond that, um, this is a freedom of speech argument. Right. Because what they're trying to do is compel speech. Mm -hmm. They're trying to force... Um, Apple to say things on their platform. Right. And even if it's somebody else saying it, it's going through their store. And so they're, they're kind of compelling Apple to say, by the way, you can go elsewhere and buy this. You don't have to buy this from me. And Apple's response is, you know what? All these people who are yelling, they have the email addresses of these people and they can go right ahead and send them emails and say, hey, if you want to pay it over here, you can do this. And boom, they can do that. And so uh, Apple's answer is not less, you know, is not forced speech, it's more speech. Right. And it's like, if you want to do that, you are fully free to go ahead and send your people an email. What you're not free to do is force us to cut our own throats and cannibalize right. ourselves, okay, and our business model so, so that you, you can make an extra buck. if Apple said, okay, fine, we just don't, we won't, we won't sell our phones in Russia. You get what hurt them? <laughs> um, I think the market for pirated Apple phones in Russia would be amazing. Um, well, just like pirated, blue jeans back there. Once they're pirated, you know, you, then the government over there can't come over and say, hey, you got to do this or else. No, you're absolutely right. I mean, Apple can yeah. Go, we don't support Russia at all. Sorry. Yeah. No, I, and I don't have a problem with that. If, you, you know, if, if, if you're going to force me to break my business model, I'm going to take my toys and go home. Right. And I have no issue with that. You know, I know they yeah. say, I know they say in, in, in our world that you don't, um, you, don't, uh, you don't talk politics, you don't talk religion, blah, 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 and you've got to stay middle of the road. I, here in the last four or five years, I completely disagree with that. Yep. Because here's the deal. If I stand my ground, and I stand what I'm for, and, and, I, and I mean I take up for what I'm for, mm -hmm. then, yep, I may lose a certain part of society, but I'll gain the other part of the society. You look at some of these, you know, boycotts that have gone on, um, you know, things like uh, Goya Foods, you know, the, the, the chairman coming out in favor of Trump, it's like, oh my God, we're going to, and they end up with their best quarter ever. Because everybody's out going, I don't know what the hell this is, but I'm going to buy it anyway because I know the guy who makes it. And so, yeah, there's a lot of people who are finding this niche marketing is more powerful 
than being a milk toast in the middle. Right. And so, yeah, I mean, people, you, you know, I guess the thing is we welcome disagreement and discussion. Absolutely. And we're not going to silence it, and oh. we're going to have fun with it. So I was, speaking of that, I was walking into DMV the, uh, to take care of some business over there. And Register out to front, vote. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> I've been registered to vote my whole life. So even when I die, I'll probably vote again. Yeah, but it'll be Democrat. Right oh, back, sorry. Right. Uh. Uh, but you walk in, and there's these guys out there signing my petition. No, don't sign his petition. I know. Sign my petition. No, don't sign either one of those petitions. You sign my petitions. So I said, I'm just going to sign them all. I don't care. And then I walked out, and they were out there arguing. I said, oh, you know what? Here, I'll give you a platform. You can come on to my, our studio. We have, we, have a, we have a show that right. we do that gives you the, a voice. And then you guys, you, you guys just hash it out. And they're like, well, I don't, I don't want to do that. No, of course not. I said, well, wait a minute. You'll sit out here and accost us walking in, but you won't get online and speak. Absolutely not. Are you afraid people are going to... No, no, no. And they're like... No. No, you know why. No, it's got nothing to do with the fact they aren't advocates. They're paid $2 a signature. Um, they know just enough about the thing that they're asking for that they can answer a couple of rudimentary questions. All they want, to, and they can't get signatures on, on a, a TV show. No, that's true. Yeah, it that's won't do them any good. So, no, of course, they have no interest in coming on. But the fact of the matter is, your point still holds. You've got people out there advocating for these causes have no idea what they are advocating for. Yeah. And that, that's what gets me. I mean, I, I, was, I was asking somebody online, I'm like, do you actually have an end game? What is your vision of the future if we enact this stuff? Mm -hmm. What benefit do you see for your great-grandchildren? -grand Spill it. Okay, because I want to see where you're, well, what you're advocating here is going to lead towards a perfect vision. I don't want to know what you don't want. I want to know what you do want. Right. And then let's see if you're actually building towards it or not. Sorry. So, all right. Let's speaking move on. Of, speaking oh. of phones, yes. which are awesome, right? Yeah. Uh, criminal hackers are now going after phone lines. Yeah. This is, this is pretty cool because what you're looking at is um, so much of what we've been doing with phones has gone from, you know, your, your classic phone lines, you know, that, you know, copper line buried in the ground, uh, is moving over to VoIP you know, voice over internet mm -hmm. pro protocols. And you look at stuff like uh, Zoom or you look at, um, oh, God, what's the classic one that we all used to use? I can't even remember the name of it now. WorldCom? No, no, no. The Skype? Skype, thank you, yes. I couldn't remember the name of it. I haven't used it in so long. Uh, I, I actually had somebody Skype, you, you know, hey, what's your Skype number? I want to call you. I'm like, what? No, um, I'm like, so. I'm sorry, we don't have Skype where I live. And I, he said, where do you live? I said, 2021. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Oh, by the 90s call, they want, it, they want, it. <laughs> they want the Skype back. Um, but, you know, back to, back to the problem is uh, as more and more and more of our phone services are going internet-based, internet uh, this leads to the potential of internet problems. Well, and know, one DNS call, one big call, is the problem. One big call center can handle over a million calls a day. Sure. A but, million digital calls. Right. And that's awesome, so these, unless, unless they're all coming in at once, right? which is what they're doing here. They're creating these auto-dialer softwares that are targeting specific uh, VoIP phone providers. And they're saying, hey, if you don't pay us a ransom, we're going to DNS your butt. Mm -hmm. And the DNS being denial of service, that means that legitimate people can't use the service because they're being denied the service because they are, um, the, the lines are clogged. All well, operators are busy. Okay, so technically, I'm talking technicalities. Yep. A, a cell phone is a voice over IP. It is and it isn't. Um, once my, once it phone, hits... We should have brought our phone guy, because my, my son yeah. dealt with voice yeah. over IP systems it's, before I got him it, back here. Technically, it isn't. Technically, once that signal hits the tower, it goes to wire. Okay. Wire. Yeah. It's wire. it's no no no. Once the signal from your phone hits the tower, the tower is wired. Okay. Oh, so it, it, it goes to wire. Oh. Um, and so it, it, it even if it's relayed, eventually it goes through a hard wire. Has to get, has uh, to get yes. Yeah. Because there's too much to handle. 
okay, for that stuff via straight up VoIP. But we're talking about, you know, a lot of major businesses have completely switched over. If you think about it, in the last two years, I don't know, something happened two years ago that had everybody working from home. Can't remember what it was. I think it was like a national holiday or something for national, two weeks. Big national holiday. Oh, yeah, for two weeks. And, um, but it ended up, you know, slamming the voice, the VoIP market. Now we can also look at things like um, telemedicine. Mm -hmm. Okay, a lot of that is going over VoIP at this point. And so when they're hitting these providers, they could be hitting things like your doctor's appointment. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, yeah, congratulations. Wherever you find something really cool and good that helps people, there'll be jerks out there who will screw up your Sunday night. Right. And, and yeah, that's and it just sucks. You yeah, know? it really does. And, um, and the thing of it is, is now and they're wanting people now. They're now they're gonna they're gonna make people pay ransoms. Exactly. Which is crap. Yeah. Which I mean, when we get down to the to another story down here, okay, that I, I was really interested in, and that is we'll 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 foreshadow that, and we're gonna talk about a massive theft of cryptocurrency. Mm. Um, get there. Yeah, if, if we get there. So um, let's move on to the next one to see if we can get there. This next one. Because this one is awesome. Yeah, I, I don't care how say, creepy people think it is. It is. It is creepy. Oh, my God, is it creepy. Oh, I don't think of it as creepy at all because as I'm watching this video, Ro Rob, are you going to pull up this video? Yeah, he's going to put the Good. video up. Good, because what I'm seeing here, this is what Disney is, needs to go for with their customer service people. Someone who sits behind a desk all day and so on. One of the issues people have with that is no facial expression. And that is what creeps people out if they're trying to deal with a robot face to face. So if you make it act like this, and, and, and this thing can't walk, okay? So this is an ideal customer service person to put behind a desk. Look at the articulated hands. Look at the face. Yeah, that's the Hall of Presidents. <laughs> and it's... Look at that. Well, wait till the next one shows up. This guy right here looks like he needs coffee. Yeah, this guy. Um, it's like, yeah. Yeah. What is up with the left eye being yeah, partially right. closed? Hey. Oh, because that's his yeah. winking eye. Uh, yeah, and okay, it's coffee. it's not so good with the, the skin stuff over the top. I mean, it's not bad, but I'm looking at this thing, and I'm like, you know, this is what I see Disney moving towards this with customer service in Tomorrowland. At the very least, okay? If not, once they get it even better, uh, you're going to have this all over the parks. Right. And why? Because um, $15 an hour. Right. So, so here's the thing. Here it is. Here's, here's the thing. Yeah. Right? Um, Crypto is 100% secure. I cannot no, stress I that strongly enough. It absolutely I'm is. To get the right word so I don't offend anybody. Um, <laughs> Good luck with that. These 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 robots, whatever. Ah. They have more facial. They have more facial. Um, agility. Agility than most Gen Zs. I don't disagree. I mean, t I mean, I could talk to them, and, they, and even if they went. Every now and then, yeah. it's better than They're not that. doing it. Exactly. That's all yeah. Yeah. yeah, they've lost. Yeah. The, 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 there's, there's a definite dumbing down of the ability to facially communicate. Right. And, and it's made even worse by mask mandates. Mm -hmm. Because now you don't even have to try. Right. And you're given a complete pass on it. But um, in this case, uh, switching over to the crypto conversation, yeah, let's talk about I'm going to say it again. Cryptocurrency is about as secure as it could ever be. But your crypto wallet, on the other hand, is where you need to watch carefully. Oh, that's what they're breaching now? Yes, they're breaching the wallets. Okay, and there's three, three incidents in here. One for $74 million. The one, the story here is $150 million, And one for $600 million. Now, the guy who stole the $600 million, I think he kind of felt bad. <laughs> Did he give half back? He gave half back. Uh, he's like, whoa, 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 this is bigger than I thought. I don't need this much. So, um, okay, so but, this is not federally insured. No, of course not. So when you lose it, you're shit out of luck. Yeah, you're, you're SOL. Um, oh, look at Anthony being so nice. I just say so, No, that, that's the phrase I've always used. I've always said SOL. But uh, in this case, um, again, the interesting part of this is, so what if I steal $150 million in crypto? What the hell am I going to do with it? Well, you buy a house. Well, no, you can't. 
Because it's stolen. Because it's, it's stolen crypto, track. it's got a digital track. What's interesting is there are brokerages out there that were legit, that were designed for people to be able to blend their, you know, different cryptocurrencies, and you know, so they could trade them in between them and so on and so forth. And it ended up uh, basically uh, delabeling oh. the cryptos. And so they, they've ended up becoming crypto fences. So they've washed the crypto. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, crypto laundering is, is what they've ended up doing. Crypto laundering. And so that's, that's something they got to work on because if they can do that, then hacking the wallet is irrelevant. Right. Okay. The point is your crypto should be coded to you. And these wallets are not encoding them properly to you. Right, right. And that's where you're ending up with the problem. Uh, so, so now that we're off crypto, well, no, I mean, we're back on one of my I, favorite I've topics. Never, I've never <laughs> been, I guess I just because I'm old and I guess I'm, you, you, I, I'm not, a, I'm a Gen Xer, but you can call me a boomer all you want. Um, if I can't touch my money, I mean, I, can, I can't really touch my money. No one can really touch their money. Not anymore. Unless you go to the bank and pull out shit yeah. of cash and yep. you're hanging around. But at least I know I can go right over to the bank and go, give me my money. And you can do that with crypto. Kind of. Well, no, not kind of. I, I can go to my, no, go to no, my bank and say I no, want crypto. No, you go to Cash App. Of course. And you buy it in Cash App. Okay, you sell it in Cash App. Yeah, and you move the money back to your bank account. But even Cash App is not federally insured. Of course not. So, okay. Because it's, but, cause their, their backbone is Square. Yeah. Right. Square is not federally insured either. Of course not. So. Because... Um, you know, and, and the thing is, Square went I down learned tomorrow. You take your cash app's gone, by the way. Right, but it only covers a hundred grand. So you, you know, you have, you have somebody loses no comment. Somebody <laughs> loses two million. Okay. Your mother's maiden name. I, you know, I want to do a no. I'm just kidding. She's dead. The uh, <laughs> What's name? Nikki. What's your favorite color? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, John, it's like you're trying to get to know me oh, financially. No. I want to be your uh, best friend. Yeah, here, take the survey, and we'll tell you what kind of right. what kind of dessert you should order. All right. So let's move um, on. So yes. let's talk about Elon Musk. Yes, my hero. So um, the pad's under uh, under construction. It has been since in, 2019. In Florida, right? Yeah, right. this is the Florida over at the Cape. They lease a big space over there, and they've just started upping their activity a little bit more. The second Starbase is going now. Yes. That is so and cool. So, this is, this is just awesome stuff and watching all of this happen. And yes, there was the story about him, you know, telling people we're going to go bankrupt if we don't do this. Right. And he said, yes, there is a pathway to bankruptcy if we work really, really hard. He came out and clarified. Um, but we can do this. We can fix these problems. Right. We've done it before. We'll do it again. And we've got to get this done. Right. And so that's really all, all he's come out and saying is, come on, people, double down. It's not good enough to say I did my job. And, it, you know, it, it's a mentality thing because I know, you know, raising my kids, don't tell them to wash the dishes because you, what you end up with is dirty, wet dishes. Mm -hmm. Tell them, clean the dishes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And too many employees of any company get hung up on, I'm going to go until I have to stop. And then it's somebody else's job to make me go again. Right. And I see that so often these days. We had... We had a long time ago, we had this girl that used to come clean the house. Yeah. And I'm like, I want this as clean as your house, right? Not thinking, not thinking. She doesn't clean her right? house. So, yeah. so, you know, we always kept going, well, why is it? It's weird. It's this, it's that, blah, blah, blah. It's yeah. not really perfectly. It's not like, and then, uh, then we went to her kid's birthday party. And I showed up to the house. I'm like, well, okay, never mind. So the next time I said, this is how I want it cleaned. Yes. And once I told yeah. her and showed her. Yeah. But, but this idea of, you know, doing a, a task versus completing a job. And I think he was just trying to light a fire saying, guys, our goal here is not to come in and punch a clock and, right. and design something that will eventually fly. Our goal is to fly this by April 15th of 2022, okay. period. So Elon and I, this is... So what, what is it going to take to get that done? not saying I'm as smart as Elon, but maybe I am. You never know. Um, but that's, I that's know. why I do... I run my business and I try to get people that understand that... You, yeah, you can come in and you can work your 40 hours and get paycheck and blah, blah, blah. Right. Um, and then you won't last long. Yeah. And it's not because you work 40 hours. It's because um, if I have to walk in and tell you what to do or how to do it, 
then you're you're working for the wrong guy because I'm the kind of guy that when you don't have something to do, you need to go find go something find something to do. To do. Um, and then yep. you know I set I set I set completion dates. I don't sit there and go well. No. I'd People like need to deadlines. Get this, I'd like yep. to kind of get this done by then. I'm like, no, I want to be open, running, and functional by this date. Yep. And if we can do it sooner, yep. Better. It could That's great. But else. let's shoot for this date, right. okay? And you, you know, sh shoot for the stars, you land on the moon, exactly. okay? Exactly. Um, so. Yeah. Shoot for the Earth, you land in Cleveland. So I am going to do. I, we're jumping around. I feel bad. Sure, go right ahead. So we're going to talk about the Pegasus spyware. It, um, it's the same story again, only now. You know, it's funny. Um, yeah, the, go ahead. I'll, I'll let you know. So, the Pegasus on Spyware it. on State Department phones, what you need to know. Software was target, had software that targeted activists, journalists, mm -hmm. and executives were poorly found on U.S. government phones. Mm -hmm. Apple sued NSO Group as its, uh, its Israel maker, right? Yeah. NSO is the software company that built Pegasus. Right. And they're like, oh, no, you did bad. You got to do this. And they're suing them, but they're not suing them for, like, money. No. They're suing them to remove their stuff from their phones, to destroy all the data. They're, they're compelling them to uh, privatize, basically, to restore the integrity of that which they destroyed. And that that's a legit request from Apple. Um, well, what, wouldn't they have had to basically jailbreak the phones to put it on there if, no. if Apple didn't intend it to be on there? No, because it, it specific, now Apple has fixed it so they can't do it anymore, but it was specifically designed to come in through other apps and packages, okay, around the proprietary network. And that's what had Apple so PO'd because it was specifically designed. Right. And it was supposed to only be available to government entities. And I'm like, why? Why would you even make this available to them? Okay, and oh, so we can stop terrorists. Yeah, I'm getting kind of tired of that argument because um, everything is to stop terrorists. It's like, you know, why am I getting a parking ticket? Stop terrorism, you know. So, um, you know, in this case, they're coming down, but they're looking at this and, you know, did NSO actually sell the software to anybody or did they sell it to maybe one really big government and that government then made it available to everybody. Right. And then that government is running around going, oh, look, it's on our State Department phones. They're evil over there. Look over there. <laughs> you know, when you come to find out that all these, you know, people and journalists and everybody that have been targeted have actually been targeted by the U.S. government anyway. Right, right. So, oh, look, our feed just went down. How did that happen? Um, <laughs> now, now, the important thing about Pegasus, it can turn on your phone. It can, I mean, it can turn on your microphone and your camera without turning on the red dots, mm -hmm. the green dots. Okay, so it literally is, it turns your phone into a spy. Right. And so it, it, it's nasty stuff. And there's 50,000 people on the last list. It's not been verified, uh, whatever, whether they were targets, but like three previous presidents are on the list. Oh, yeah. crap. So, yeah. Snap. Is that what they say in case <clears throat> Oh, snap. Let's talk about the Twitter thing. <laughs> so Twitter says it mistakenly. Mistakenly. Oh, mm, sorry about no, that. No, no, no. It did mistakenly. This is not what they intended. Suspend accounts yeah. after new policy spur. Right. Malicious we have report. to back up and explain the policy. Oh, okay. Twitter has, you know, and, and, and I'm going to give you a chronology of events here. Twitter has said, you know what? We're going to go ahead and delete tweets and deplatform people who are using private citizens' images and so on uh, without their permission, okay? So if you're out videoing in a crowd and, you know, somebody in that crowd happens to, you know, be somebody that doesn't want to be in your video, uh, they can go ahead and report you and you'll get bumped, okay? You'll, the, the video comes down, you get a warning, do it enough, boom, you're gone. Oh, like Facebook? Sort of. Like YouTube? Yeah, sort of, except this is, this is wild because this is like, if you don't have their permission, you can't share the video. So if you have a video of somebody, you know, doing something really bad, like robbing a bank, that bank robber can actually go in and then go, I don't want my picture up online. Right. Okay. And they can get you bumped for calling them out. Now... This was, you know, seen as, oh, this is really good for private citizens. And it had all the normal talking points that, you know, people on one side of the aisle, you know, go, oh, that feels good. Meanwhile, people on the other side of the aisle who are very accustomed to being targeted and deplatformed are looking at this going, are you out of your freaking minds? Because we will be hit immediately. Okay, because some, because this is just a complaint factory and a way to deplatform people.
Because right. all you got to do is get somebody in somebody's video. You know, you got Charlie Kirk out there at Turning Point USA out doing college campus interviews. And one of these people who's standing there talking to the microphone and saying, I, I didn't give my permission for this video. Suddenly, boom, they're off Twitter. Right. Okay. And so they saw this coming. So what happened? Um, several groups, and we don't even know who they were, but we know how they're labeled, and they're labeled with the usual epithets of white supremacist and right-wing extremist, okay, went out and said, okay, this is your new rule. All right, let's see how fair it is. These people don't have my permission to be doxing me and trying to get me fired from my job, so I'm going to lodge a complaint. So what did Twitter do? Twitter actually used their policy as it was written and intended. And the hardcore leftists, censorists, fascists, whatever you want to call them, were barred. They had their videos dropped because this actually followed a fair. And Twitter came out and said, we didn't mean for people on the left to get signed. Whoa, no, no. So they put all their accounts back. No, no, no. This is only for targeting the right is basically what they proved mm -hmm. with this action. This policy is only for targeting conservatives and people on the right, period. Okay, so but so now, but the left or the right now has Rumble, uh, mm -hmm. Parler, and yep. and so does the left. They can go on there anytime oh, yeah, they absolutely. want. That's but just it. Let's, let's be real. Yeah, and we now have two split. We yes, platforms. yeah, we have parallel economies. Okay, and but the point is, the more they do this the more they make themselves irrelevant. Remember when we started with that talk about boycotting at the beginning mm -hmm. and how, you know, where's the money concentrated? Where's the actual buying power concentrated? And the middle class, by and large, leans right. And so the more they do this, the more they say, you can't see them here, you can't see them here, you can't talk about this, you can't say that, you can't do this. They're, they're pushing people away from their platforms. I mean, I know in January, um, Parler, no, Gab, had yeah, 30 million new users sign up. Right. For God's sake. I mean, because they're like, I don't want to be hanging out someplace where I can't talk to my friends anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's that. And it wasn't so much, it, yes, it was political, but it's not about the political content. Right. It's about being, being persecuted for your politics. Right. So that's where Twitter has now confirmed this is strictly a policy for targeting people on the right. Got it. Because as soon as it was used legitimately to, um, to, to stand up for people on the right, they disallowed it. Hmm. It's like, no, 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 this is only for targeting you. Shut up. You're not here anymore. And so do you think the thing that happened, that's happening over eBay is the same thing? No, eBay was a FUBAR. Ubar. Ube, yeah, Ube. <laughs> Fube. Uh, <laughs> um, no, that looked like, because uh, they ended up banning like, like a buttload of people. And then they're like, oh, crap, no, we didn't mean that. That was just, it looks like something triggered something. And so they went back, and, and they've turned them all back on again. Oh, have they? So, yeah, it was, it, it, it was a complete oopsie. It was like Facebook going down for, you know, six hours, whatever. It was an oopsie. Oh. Um, so there you go. So that one's back up. Um, you know, I'm trying to see. I know we got good stuff. I just want to make sure that we're getting yeah. into the good. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, let's see. Does oh, here we go. <laughs> I love this one. Mm. <clears throat> All right. So does playing violent video games impact behavior? This had to have been the dumbest test I've ever seen to try and test this. Uh, it says no. Um, yeah, it says no because of the way they constructed the test. They asked for volunteers. They took 90 people between the ages of 18 and 48. So these are people whose behavior patterns are already well entrenched, well established. Okay? And then it's and then they said, "Okay, we're going to let them we're going to let this group of of people play no games, this group play, you know, um uh, whatever farm builder whatever the hell it is. <laughs> okay, the Sims, okay? And then this group over here is going to play Grand Theft Auto 5." And then we're going to test them for violence, tens of disease. Well, you're talking about adults who already have established personalities. Right. And so, no, it's not going to change anything from playing a game for two months. But what we're talking about here is kids five, six, seven years old. We're talking about kids even 14, 15 years old who are learning how the world works. Right. They're learning what consequences are. You know, there's a reason that 16-year-olds have really crappy driving records. 
and that they cost a ton to insure. It's because they make really bad decisions when driving. Mm -hmm. And it's because they don't understand and consequences. Also, mentally, they can't multitask properly. It's the 25-year-olds that still think they're 18 years old. And I'm, I'm okay with that as long as it's 18, not 16. Mm -hmm. uh, because at the, the, there's, there's a marked difference, especially in the male brain, okay, as... Um, as these things, uh, as your brain develops, you can't functionally multitask until you're about 20 years old. The human brain doesn't allow for it properly. You can't, really? yeah, you can't like Can drive and take a phone call. Kids under 20 should not have the radio on or music or anything in the car when driving. They can't sufficiently listen to it. I know a kid driving down the road heard something on the radio, started thinking about it, blew through a red light and slammed into a car. What? Specifically because something came up, made her think about something, she started visualizing it and oh, immediately God. dropped out of the real world. Damn. Okay, that's normal for that age. Now, a couple of years later, she can't even imagine doing it. Right. Because her brain's not the same. And so having a test of people who are between 18 and 48 okay, is, is ridiculous. Yeah. It, 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 it doesn't reflect, and, and it goes against the other tests that say, no, extended exposure to younger age groups is potentially dangerous. Right. And so just be careful. Now, I'm not arguing for a China policy where kids under 18 are not allowed to play video games anymore. Right. Okay, they're completely, it used to be three hours a week, now it's zero, and they've instituted facial recognition technology so that it'll know if you're playing and then your parents go to jail for allowing it. I mean, like, yeah, this is just great. Okay, that's not what we're looking at. What we're looking at here is like, can we just all be adults for a second? No. And say, gee, is this something we should be careful of? Or should we be buying a gun for our kid who's already said he's going to go to the school and shoot people? I don't know. Not the best idea in the world. Right. Which... Yeah, if you know about what happened in Michigan, you know that's pretty much what just happened. Right. Um, and they gave him a gun two weeks before. Right. So, yeah, wow. Okay, parents have responsibility. And no matter how much the state wants to say that it, has, it, it actually owns your children, no, it doesn't. You do. So work on it, people. Work on it. And this is a case where you can work on you it. you got to work. work. So, hey, look, <clears throat> speaking of gaming, the U.S. Federal Trade Commission sues to block NVIDIA arm deal. Yes. Now, I did not put this in here. Yeah, I did a little reading on it, and it makes sense is this you because or is this, Adam? this is Adam. Okay. Um, but and Adam, as you can see, is off dealing with he a has got a server. major bomb going on. Yes, right now, so I, I mean you know totally he, he got called in on a job. Yeah. is what it is. Um, n nothing he did wrong and has to fix. He's got to oh. come in and fix it He's for somebody to else. Save somebody. Yes, they're they're rapidly losing all the data off their um, business hard drive, so he's over there saving it all. Um, but in this case, Nvidia is trying to buy ARM, and ARM is a company that, excuse me, a lot of chip makers use right. uh, to for portions of their chip software, and Nvidia is a chip manufacturer. And if they own it, then they control these other chip manufacturers. And that's uh, really not okay. Right. Okay, so that's the story behind it's it. It's like, no, 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 no. You know, you can't, you can't own the mine and the general store. Okay, we tried that once. Yep. Didn't work out so well. Nope, did not. Um, so that's, so that, that's kind of what that NVIDIA story is about. Um, are, are, are we doing tech fail of the week is number 14? Is, is that tech fail? Because um, it should be. <laughs> no, we're going to get to there. We're no, get yes. To there, so. oh, okay. All right. Um, yeah, we're talking about the um, the Nvidia's. They're launching the new uh, yeah 2060 from 219, but they just they just oomped it up. Yeah. Now it's got 12 gig memory. 12, 12, yep. Yeah. It's, yeah. Basically, I believe they retrofitted. Okay, uh, in order to increase awesome. capacity. Because yeah, I love it. That, they have, they, that is laying around. Yeah, and so if they can go back and retrofit it and, you know, help curb the demand or, you know, yeah, curb the shortage, whatever. Yeah, you'd curb the shortage. You're not going to curb. Well, it would curb the, the demand, demand by curbing demand. the shortage. Never mind. Um, actually, so if you, it, it's, it's actually both. <laughs> you can solve the problem. Uh, <laughs> exactly. So Hold on, um, I'm being retrofitted. Right, yep. Oh, hey, hey, there was a movie about that. Oh, I wish. Get your upgrades. No, there was a movie about uh, it. Yeah. I got to think that off the top of my head. Yeah. So, uh, before, but before we get to the tech fail, uh, um, we skipped up. We skipped Oh, up. we skipped a really important one up there. Well, I think it is. It's a handy little tool. Yeah, that's the one I'm Christmas. talking about. 
It's yeah. Christmas time. And, and what's the worst thing is have a stupid. Yeah, if you have incandescent bulbs, which a lot of the, these trees, you know, you pay $300 for your tree that has the lights built in, okay? It has incandescent bulbs in it. Right. Uh, and those little bulbs that you got to, like, plug in out of the socket, they're kind of a pain in the butt. Um, but then you're, you, one goes out and you lose the whole string. And that, that's the old story from, I have to, I have this. from when we were children, okay? I have this. We have switched over completely to LED at this point. Yeah. Um, but I have not. Yeah, we have, and so this is not for me, but I actually went through and I watched their how-to video to really get a grip on it, and it's really neat. I mean, this thing is like a Swiss Army knife. I have it. Oh, you bought one? I have one. Oh, cool, these. yeah. That's the best thing I ever bought. Yeah, I mean, you can test the fuse. You can test the bulb. Okay, it's all built into it. Too. Yeah, you can test, then you test the socket, okay, and what you do is you plug this thing into the socket, and it does a, and, and you pump the trigger. And that apparently shoves juice through the whole line. Just enough. Just enough so that you can see which bulb is actually out. Then you can go replace that bulb. Test the new bulb before you put it in. You got a tester right there. And, the, and this thing even has a bulb puller that helps you remove yes. the bulbs. Because I, I hate that part because I, I was forever crushing them. Right. You know, and so this allows you to remove the bulb and, you know, test it and then put it in. And boom, all in one $20 device. And not only do you get the benefit of the handle mm -hmm. being a little storage container for bulbs and fuses and such, but if you look at it closely, it looks like a classic Klingon disruptor. And <laughs> that is badass. Okay. I, you know, yes. I did not that see that. That is a classic Klingon disruptor that right there. I love it. Too um, yep. So Too pretty cool funny. stuff. And for less than 20 bucks, and I'm right. sure you can get it somewhere other than Amazon, and it's worth paying a little bit more to buy it there. So here are some here are some little gadgets, right? The, you know, we we I know we should probably shouldn't give all this, but Top Crate has 65 genius stocking starters guaranteed to sell out by the end of December, 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 December. by the end of October or something, right. probably. Yeah. Um, um, but here we go. Uh, first thing on there is the Polyglue translator. Yep, instant two-way language translator. Um, it is the software that you can get in your phone. That does that. Right. Uh, the new one we talked about, the headsets. Yes. That are going to be able to do that. Right. I'm, I mean, ju just an earpiece that automatically translates for you. Right. And how freaking awesome is that? You know, when you're sitting in the nail salon now, you'll know what the hell they're yeah. saying. Yeah. Uh, and so. <laughs> and this next thing I love this is Bondic, yeah. the innovative DIY tool that fixes anything. It's it's like. Looks like a mini soldering iron. It, yeah, but it's it uses light, right? I think it's pretty cool. Oh, I'm a, I'm a gooey, I'm, I, I love crap like this, right? So to me, if if you got to weld something together, why not use this? You put the little stuff on there, you pop it with the blue light. It's this is based off of oh. the same the same stuff as they use in your teeth. The dentist yes. put the glue and they hit it with the light. Yes, and it instantly hardens. Yes, it. yes, yes. It, so it uses a polymer adhesive yes. that if you cure with the infrared or the ultraviolet. Uh, becomes super hard. That's what it. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it is good. Second yeah. is a circuit knee breakthrough knee sleeve designed to make your knee va uh, pain vanish. I don't know. I this is like the gold and the copper fit and all that kind of crap. I think it's just yeah. It, okay, whatever. Yeah. Uh, a busy ball. Discover the secret tool to entertaining your dog when you're not there. My dog chews everything oh. anyway. So the dog, well, ball. well, you because my, my dog, my dog, she won't even chase a ball. You throw it, she'll look at you like, you're going to go get that? Yeah. Because I'm not going to get I'm not going to get that. Oh, and by no, the way, but now that you've made Now, now we have one treat. dog, we have one dog who is like, I mean, at five o'clock, he's at the back door going, yo, ball time. Let's go. Come on. You know, and, and you have to take him out and he'll throw it and he will run himself. We have to stop him in the summer. Okay, because he will run to the point where his heart bursts. Yeah. Uh, but so we'll stop in the summer. But it's so cool because we, we we say last one, we throw it, and then he comes in and he drops it by the door on his way into the house. That's cool. He he doesn't come back to us to have it thrown. We we, we use the ball chucker. So I like uh, this. I like that. This What's is this called one? the Hootie Alert. <laughs> Not the Hooter Alert. Nope. The Hootie. H o o t i e. Personal safety alarm for women. I yep. guess you keep this on your keychain if you uh, it goes off. And strobe light, strobe light decibels. That's kind of normal. Okay. I still think a gun's the best thing, but that's just yeah. Uh, Alpha heater, world's most powerful and efficient Ooh, portable heater. How big is that? 
I don't know. Uh, heat up any cold room in five minutes. Five so it's got to be pretty big. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's cool. Using less energy than your laptop. Now, you know, we'll put the link to this in our in the show. Yeah. Somewhere, so that way yeah. people can actually. This is kind of cool. Right. Photo Stick, world's only instant photo organizer. It's a thumb drive. It's a thumb drive that automatically searches your computer and pulls right. all photos, which you may not want if you think about it. Right. Laundry Masher. It's okay. Like a, it looks like a grenade. It looks like a it yeah, place your laundry a lemon colored it. hand grenade. I don't think so. Um, yeah, silver beads, nano infused, blah blah. Yeah. I, I love it. Everything is nano these days. Okay, I want soap. it's like yeah. Give me soap. My Prius is nano compared uh, to my nine Dodge. Number Starscope monocular. Oh, you know what? And there's a whole we we got a whole bunch of stuff in here. Yeah. I do I do like this one. The Bolts Pro charger smartphone and other devices four times faster. Blah blah blah. I'm totally in for so, that. The last thing, we are going to do a tech fail, because <laughs> I, I honestly think it's what you should do. Yes, um, which is the tiny, yeah, I love this, I love this. Um, I don't know what they were oh, thinking. And we're live. Okay, so, this, yeah. yeah, like it's, okay, so tiny robot courier trucks get stuck after snowfall in Estonia. Yeah, because it never snows in Estonia. It never. And they put uh, these tiny little one-inch wheels I'm, I mean, I mean, the wheels are maybe an inch wide. Okay, I've got, I've got vehicles at home that I've built for you know steampunk races, and you, you know, and they will handle all of this stuff without any trouble right. at all. They'll go right through. But they build these things to use in a country that snows. All the time. And they didn't think to put snow tires on the damn right. things. So. Well, of course, the bigger the tire, the less the battery. Okay? Right. Just like your truck. Okay? Right, right. If, if I put mud tires on my Frius, I'm going to kill my mileage. Yep. It'll look kind of weird, but, you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You so like there you minutes. go. Yeah, that was just anyway. really, really, really poor Good show planning. Today. We, got, we got it yep. out there. If you got any questions, text John at WeBeamTV.com. Hopefully, yeah, yeah, write we'll to us. We're lonely. Next week, and we'll have the three crew back together. Back together. That'll be nice for the first time in four freaking ever. Yeah, I know. But it's yeah. Wonderful. Hey, take care, everybody. everybody. Bye bye. Have a techie week. Bye bye. Technical and stuff for so yeah. Come on, come on and turn it on. Tune into the Tech Shop Box. Come on, come on and turn it on. Tune into the Tech Shop Box. Come on, come on and turn it on. Tune into the Tech Shop Box. Come on, come on and turn it on. Tune into the Tech Shop Box. Cool.